Hello, I'm Philip Brunel, Artistic Director and Founder of Vocal Essence and Organist Choir Master at Plymouth Congregational Church in Minneapolis. Each day I've chosen a composer who's had a role to play with both organizations, and today it's a man I wish I could have met, because reading about him, studying his music, this would be one of the super people, Harry T. Burley. He was an arranger, he was a composer, he had a phenomenal baritone voice, and he, as an African American, did so much. If you can just imagine, born in 1866, what he did to bring the spirituals to the concert stage he was really one of the most effective people. He wrote in 1917, uh, because he had arranged many spirituals, he wrote these words. The plantation songs known as spirituals are the spontaneous outbursts of intense religious fervor and had their origin chiefly in camp meetings, revivals, and other religious exercises. They were never composed, but sprang into life, ready-made, from the white heat of religious fervor during some protracted meeting in camp or church, as the simple ecstatic utterance of wholly untutored minds, and are practically the only music in America which would meet the definition of being folk songs. It is a serious misconception of their meaning and value to think of them as anything like a minstrel song or try to make them funny because their worth is weakened unless they are done impressively for through all these songs there breathes a hope, a faith in the ultimate justice and brotherhood of all. The cadences of sorrow invariably turn to joy and the message is ever manifest that eventually deliverance from all that hinders and oppresses the soul will come and every man and woman will be free. Amazing, passionate words of Harry Burley. He went to the National Conservatory of Music in New York City, born in Pennsylvania, and for 52 years was the baritone soloist at St. George's Episcopal Church in New York City. Now you can imagine, back at the time that he took that position, not everybody thought that there should be an African American as a soloist in New York City in this church. But the man who cast the deciding vote, which I love, was J.P. Morgan, who said, we want him. And so for 52 years, he was their baritone soloist. One of the songs that he arranged, one of the spirituals, of course, he wrote, and he did arrangements of dozens of these, but one of the most beautiful, and it's the simple harmonies that he's given to it, is Deep River, a piece that he arranged back in 1913.
Music of Harry T. Burley. <coughs> when he went to the National Conservatory of Music, he, it is said, uh, that when he wandered in the halls, he would often be singing spirituals. And one of the visiting professors there who heard him was a man named Antonin Dvorak. And Dvorak asked him to sing more to him and hear more because, of course, Dvorak, who being from Czechoslovakia and knowing those particular folk song traditions, coming to America for several years, didn't know, of course, about spirituals. So he was very taken in with what, what was happening with Burley. And he uh, wrote down a number of them and uh, I think became very enchanted and they became good friends. So I love this uh, bulletin. This is 1939 that I found this St. George's Church, the church where he was the baritone soloist for 52 years. This was at the point of his 45th year there. And it gives you just a sense of the depth of this man. 45 years ago, last February, Harry T. Burley was invited to become a soloist in St. George's Choir. A year before, coming from Erie, Pennsylvania on borrowed money to compete for a scholarship at the National Conservatory of Music on East 17th Street. He was successful and began his musical career in New York. He has sung in church, synagogue, university, and on the public platform. He has traveled considerably and in 1909 sang before King Edward VII. He is a composer of distinction and assisted Dvorak in the composition of the first movement of the New World Symphony. But then here is the, the man. St. George's has enjoyed a share of Mr. Burley's time. Only a man with greatness in his soul could maintain the unqualified admiration and affection of colleagues and fellow parishioners through all the hard work and changes of 45 years. How many of us could pass that kind of test? Mr. Burley has passed it, not only because he is a musician of distinction, but because he is also a man of religion. He is in church Sunday mornings long before most of us getting the feel of it. Underneath his song and his composition, are the wings of triumphant faith. Before I came to St. George's, this is the minister speaking, a friend in Buffalo said, are you going to Mr. Burley's church? An affirmative answer brought approval. His ministry here has helped to give character and depth to this parish for nearly half a century. The spontaneity of today's tribute to him establishes this fact beyond doubt. When Burley passed away in 1949, there were at the funeral, it is said, more than 2,000 people attending. And among the pallbearers, what a distinct, I mean, what a distinguished group of people. Hall Johnson, U.B. Blake, W.C. Handy, this man was beloved. At Vocal Essence, in our Witness CDs, the fourth one is one that captures some of the music of the early times, and Burley is represented on that fourth CD. I hope you'll take a listen. A piece called Ethiopia Saluting the Colors. And here is one of my favorites of all of his arrangements. It's the spiritual my Lord, what a morning when the stars begin to fall.
Have a wonderful day.